Welcome to the George Lynch Hunting Podcast, brought to you by Legendary Gear, the game call company that is legend by design. Well, folks, I've been with Sick of Gear from, from the first day they started. I've been a follower, a believer, and a user from day one. Well, this week, I'm very proud and excited to have this week's guest, Chris Derrick, who is from Sick of Gear. He is the product developer for the Whitetail and Turkey Line. Hey, Chris, thanks for being on board. Yeah, thanks for having me. You betcha. You know, um, turkey, we're going to be today. The turkey is what we're going to be talking a lot about. But uh, um, I'll let you give uh, the folks out there a little bit of your description and what your job titles are and what you do with uh, Sitka. And then I'd like to move on and and go into uh, the thing that that I just love and what we're talking about today. And that's about your new uh, Equinox uh, line and the line of clothing for the uh, bug repellent. So if you wouldn't yep. mind, just kind of give a brief description to everybody. Yeah, so uh, again, yeah, I'm Chris Derrick, and I, I work mainly on whitetail and turkey products. So I just got back uh, last night around midnight from Florida. I was out there down for uh, the opener on Osceola's, and, um, you know, that's a great buggy environment we were talking about. So, uh, you know, be able to go down there early. I mean, I live in Montana now, so... Uh, you know, I'm dealing a lot with snow on the season opener. And then, you know, down there, you can, you can get into uh, some pretty warm conditions pretty quickly. So that's totally different a night and day elements. Yeah, it definitely. It, it definitely was a bit warmer and uh, ticks were already out and about. So um, yeah, we did, we did, but luckily I uh, was fortunate to be able to take a bird and, uh, uh, and uh, so a, g- a good week. It, did he, is the Osceola different than the Merriam? Oh, yeah. It's, uh, I mean, they're just, uh, they are somewhat similar in Easterns, have a slight different pattern, uh, but they're, you know, they have uh, typically some great daggers on the on them as well for spurs and, uh, you know, long beards, um, a little bit cagey, and, uh, but uh, pretty aggressive birds. Uh, I would say they're, they're uh, a bit harder to take than Merriam's. Uh, you know, Easterns, I believe Easterns and Osceola's, you know, are uh, two of the harder species to be able to get. Um, they, they, they definitely uh, tend to get more pressure. Um, uh, you know, I've hunted birds in a lot of different locations. Uh, Merriam's, though, are definitely the prettiest. Um, so I would say that's for true. I was told the the Osceola, Osceola turkey there were very quiet once they hit the ground. They're not as vocal as the other turkey. Is that true? Yeah, uh, we, we were definitely very quiet. Uh, you know, they would typically gobble a bit on the roost, uh, maybe a few times down on the the ground, and then and then uh, wouldn't come in. Um, but you know, I have seen they may be quiet, but sometimes when they get on the deeks, they they uh, they they certainly tear into them uh quite often it seems like so um that's but uh, you know they're one. they're a fun bird to chase <laughs> that's what you know it's i don't know how many times you've shot or how many you've killed it's that first gobble of the season that you hear it gets the heart bumping the heart gobble in the morning you know every gobbler that comes in and each one could be different how they hit those decoys or a smart one cagey one that circles i mean each hunt and, and, and is great and different and one thing i will say you know if there's a guarantee in turkeys there's no guarantee yeah absolutely <laughs> you know? we had one that that week uh over three days they heard him gobble three times um and that was it wow. so, but they knew he was wow. there so he was definitely a hard one but they got uh, uh a guy gary got him the the last night that he was there so Awesome. Well, one of the folks, one of the things that we're, I'm excited to talk about because I've been a big advocate about this is because I've suffered and I, I've, I've got the, the worst end of uh, those little cranny creatures that crawl on and bite. And that's uh, uh, the Lyme's disease with tick. And I, you know, I go to great efforts and every year and when I'm doing seminars and talking to people about turkey hunting, you know, one of the most important things I said, you know, it's real covered decoys is easy and, you know, the turkeys and scouting, but I'm telling you right now, to me, your most preparation should be your clothing and to protect your skin and yourself from these biting creatures, because it is devastating. It can, it, it can mess you up physically the pain, the tiredness, you know, you can fight. And I was lucky to catch it fairly easy, you know, early and go through medication. But um, so 
Let's go through that, if you would, of, uh, you know, when you came out with that and your clothing line, what it's called and, and how it's made to protect the individual turkey hunting. Yeah. Um, so, uh, I mean, your, your situation is so similar and it tips almost everyone that I know, especially, uh, outdoorsmen. If I walk into a room and I ask, you know, I'm given a seminar and I ask people just to raise their hands, if either they have had had a tick-borne illness or they know somebody that they're close to that has had a tick-borne illness, nearly 100% of the hands will go up in the audience um, uh, these days. And it's it's really on the rise. Uh, it's something that's really underreported. Um, you know, when when you take a look at the cases that are, are um, you know, reported to the CDC, you know, it might, it might read only 30 or 40,000, but even they'll admit uh, that's probably uh, at least tenfold the number of what's coming in. So when we take a look at with all of the different tick-borne illnesses, which there are, you know, there's Rocky Mountain spotted fever, there's Lyme disease, uh, there's there's quite a few that are uh, viral. Uh, there's some that are bacterial, um, so, you know. So when you're taking a look at those, like what you're talking about, Lyme disease is a bacterial infection, um, but there are some other ones that are actually viral which means that there's nothing you can really do for them. And all of the symptoms that you see with these are very, very going to be very similar, whatever you have. There's going to be fatigue. There's going to be a rash. Uh, it can uh, progress in the joint pain. Um, there's even one now uh, out that, uh, that that's on the, the growth right now, but uh, severe cases, uh, roughly 10% result in death. Uh, and about half of the people that wind up with it wind up with a long-term chronic uh, illness. So, you know, and then, you know, one that that's actually just an allergy, it comes from actually a, a sugar uh, that makes you allergic to red meat, and that's called alpha alpha gal. So uh, what what happens with alpha gal if you if you have maybe a genetic uh, predisposition to be able to um, get this, uh, what will happen is you won't be able to uh, um, eat uh, red meat, uh, anymore. So if you, anything that, anything that is hooved, you won't be able to eat anymore. So, um, though, you know, the rise of those, uh, types of illnesses is, is why I was so, uh, keen to solve this. My own daughter got Lyme disease, uh, when, when she was really, really young. And, um, and I wanted to develop a, a solution that was very simple for people to use, um, but also is really effective and comfortable in warm and, and uh, warm weather. And so the Equinox Guard uh, is designed uh, really with two two avenues in mind. One being mechanical prevention. That's stopping the uh, the uh, tick, which is an arachnid actually, or uh, insects like mosquitoes. Um, from actually contacting your skin. And then the other portion of that is uh, permethrin based or chemical based. And that really uh, works uh, after the mechanical takes effect. So if you think about it in the, the aspect of with ticks, you know, typically you're going to be walking by blade of grass or a uh, maybe a leaf. You're going to brush against that. They're going to drop off on your clothing, and then they're going to crawl and look for a, a, a location to be able to latch on, which they have to latch on and, and take a feeding to complete each of the four stages of their, their life cycle. Um, so, you know, all the way from, a you know, like nymph to an adult stage, they have to take a feeding at each one of those stages um, to continue their, their development. Um, and so when, when they're doing that, uh, you want to have a mechanical portion uh, that actually prevents them from contacting your skin. And then what the permethrin does is uh, that takes a little bit of time to take an effect. So if you use the mechanical portion of the system uh, to prevent them from contacting your skin, then the to, the permethrin will do a knockdown. Uh, basically, there's a test that we do uh, through, in, it's an insect shield test uh, where you take a uh, um, ticks or mosquitoes, you apply them to the fabric for two minutes, and then you pull them away and you measure uh, how many die and you do that through wash cycles. So one of the, the things about insect shield is you don't have to retreat your clothing again. So when you're buying it, you're buying it for the life of the garment. So those are garments on some species of ticks that we're seeing near 100% through 70 washes. Um, you know, uh, uh, on the knockdown test. Um, so, you know, so that that's how the system works. 
So if you look at um, the way that the pants are designed, um, I've got a pair in front of me here. I'll just describe for anybody just listening. But uh, if you look at down at the hem, you're going to see uh, an internal gaiter. And this is a really lightweight, super stretchy textile. You can't fill it. But all, all you have to do is put your pants on one leg at a time, roll your sock over the top of this um, internal leg gaiter, uh, put your wow. boots on. And what's going to happen is those, those ticks or chiggers are going to come up. They're going to contact that intern internal gaiter if they come under the hem. Uh, and then the permethrin is going to go to work and then you're going to have a knockdown. So then you're not bringing them home because a lot of times when you get home, you'll find them crawling on your clothes. You're going to bring them into your hamper. So that's the mechanical portion of the pant. Uh, the textile, you can see this really like fine raised grid pattern. That's to promote yep. airflow. Uh, we have vents that you can open and close inside of the garment as well. And then just doing something as simple as tucking in your shirt, you're going to get coverage uh, to be able to prevent them from getting on you. I've been using this product since uh, 2019, 2018, really. I have not had a tick in four years. And um, and so this has been, you know, an extremely uh, high functioning product from a pant from a, and the pants really focused on tick and chigger protect, protection. Well, I tell you what, that was an awesome advice. I'm, I'm going to tell you for myself that about the socks, rolling the socks up because I didn't know that. And that makes totally sense, you know, them that crawl down in your boot. Because if we're, especially if you're turkey hunting, we're laying down at the base of the tree, your feet and legs are laying down into the brush and stuff. So, you know, whatever they get center crawls on, a lot of times you can crawl on your boot, then head down your boot and up your pant leg. But that makes total sense. Yeah. And, and, and one of the things I, it, I'm, I'm extremely lazy. I'll admit it. You know, if I get busy and I've got to run out and work in the field, or if I'm running out for a turkey hunt, a lot of times I'm, I'm not really thinking about uh, preparing and I'm not going to maybe forget my, my sprays. Um, you know, a lot of those other sprays also like DEET, we know, we know that causes cancer. You have to use it very sparingly. Uh, the insect shield treatment goes through it. We actually treat it in garment form. So it's not done in a rolled textile form. We take the finished garment. It goes through a very, very high temperature. I'm talking like 140 degrees centigrade. And then uh, wow. so uh, when it, when you do this, it's actually bonding it to the material. You don't have to go back and retreat this again. You don't have to worry about all you got to do is literally wake up in the morning, put on your pants, roll up your socks, tuck in your shirt. And you're going to have an extremely effective solution. Um, you know, that textile, that treatment, you know, it's an expensive process. The pants are, you know, they're they're not they're not an inexpensive pant. But the way I look at it, if you've ever had Lyme disease or had had somebody that has to deal with the long term consequences of doing that, uh, you know, that one time happening is way, way more expensive than anything you'd ever invest into a system. Um, well, I can second that because I know that it just not just the having to deal with, with limes, you know, and the, and the suffering that you go physically. I mean, this outfit here, you take care of it. And like you said, it's a lifetime of the garment. So this will be my lifetime, my whole life. I mean, I'll take care of it. This is going to give me protection basically when you're wearing through the summertime or through the spring. But we're going to get video of me mowing grass on the rider because of the ticks that we get right in grass. I'll be all decked out and sick. <laughs> but it is, it's a, I'm, I'm kudos to you guys. It's, um, and, and people out there, I'm, it's looking after the hunter. You know, it's not just making a garment that, you know, all about how it looks, but you're making a garment that it serves a purpose. And that's kind of been the theme of, of Sitka ever since I've been a part of it. You know, not, it, nothing was designed to look a, a good on a bar stool. It, everything you guys design, it was designed for a purpose. And yeah. This and, just, and we try and we try and validate both in the field and in the lab. Um, you know, I think you're wearing the Equinox Guard hoodie right now. Uh, this this one design and the glove both share. It's the same textile that's in that lower leg of that that pant. Um, but when you look at so when I look at the hoodie and the glove, I really think about mosquito prevention, right? Where the pant, I'm thinking about you know tick protection, but then you just tuck your hoodie in. And you basically your lower half of your body is really where you're going to focus on for ticks and chiggers. The upper part of your body, uh, I tend to make. Take most of the bites. I'm sure anybody listening can uh, relate to this. Usually in the back of my hand, uh, usually around my ears, and usually on my upper shoulders. That tends to be where I get mosquito bites with the 
the spe the species like the Aedes aegypti uh, mosquitoes that we have uh, around here. Um, you know, mosquitoes are they're uh, they're very annoying. Uh, first of all, uh, they make you itch. Uh, there are some some diseases that come from them. They're not quite as as many. Uh, like I I met I was with a guy this weekend who wound up uh, getting uh, uh, Zika. Uh, from uh, one, and he wound up in the hospital and then a, a life flight helicopter uh, to be able, uh, you know, so it does, there are rare since instances where you just hit the perfect storm. This is, this is somebody that actually runs, you know, ultra marathons. He just wound up in the perfect storm where, where it wound up getting him sick that way. So when I look at the design of this glove, you can see the back of the hands made out of this, this specialized textile. The entire hoodie is made out of this specialized textile, but we do what's called a heated blood membrane dust. So one of the things is you don't really want to. There's a lot of uh, a lot of process you have to go through when you put human subject testing. So what we did is we actually developed a test where you release 20 female uh, mosquitoes into a cage. It's a clear cage. If you go to sickagear.com, there's a great video on, if you look up the Equinox Guard, like sickagear.com slash the Equinox Guard, the video, you'll see the blood membrane test. But what we do is if we heat up a blood membrane, you release the 20 female uh, Aedes aegypti mosquitoes in there. And then we measure their feed rate on that blood membrane over 20 minutes. So we'll put a control mesh that we know that they can feed through. And then we'll take different textiles that we're testing with different properties we think maybe would increase the mechanical bite resistance of that because uh, they, they'll take their proboscis. They're trying to pierce the textile into your skin. And so you want to prevent them from getting their um, their proboscis through. And so this, this, this textile is really developed on a very specialized machine that's an extremely high gauge knit with certain stretch properties and uh, knitted in such a way that it makes it very difficult for them to be able to get their proboscis through. And why is that just important? If I take a t-shirt and just apply permethrin on it, I can tell you when you're the only thing sitting in the woods, those mosquitoes will go to work on you. They'll still bite. They may go back and die later, uh, but they're still going to be biting you through this. So that mechanical portion of this textile gives the permethrin type to, time to work. And this thing is extremely lightweight. It feels like the lightest weight, stretchy textile that you would find in a base layer. Um, but I, I know for a fact that this has a huge effect at reducing the number of bites that a mosquito can get through. I've got a video of me field testing this. Uh, I've got mosquitoes basically trying to pierce through on the glove. Um, and I've got a whole minute and a half of one just walking around. You can see her just poking, 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 and just cannot find a spite to get through. Uh, and, and finally, uh, uh, she leaves. So, you know, having that mechanical portion of the textile to prevent the bites allows the permethrin to work more effectively. Than just it's well, not like you just put I've this heard. on a shirt. Well, that's something I've never heard talked about, and that makes sense because you know a lot of people just put the bug spray on. So let me get this right. Well, so we need not just the chemical protection; we also need the mechanical protection to go with it. Is that how I'm taking that? Is that correct? Yep. Yeah. Yep. It's not. Yeah. You. You. If you just, I can promise you, you. If you just take a T-shirt out and put uh, treat it with permethrin. Uh, you might get a reduction in certain instances of mosquitoes, uh, but you're there's still going to be if there's a if you're in a situation where there's a lot of them. So just a perfect example, my wife and I were bear hunting. Uh, I just went out with one of our core lightweight hoodies on, which is a super breathable uh, kind of a air mesh to to allow um, uh, um airflow and moisture management, but we wound up in a situation where we wound up in a really terrible mosquito filled area. And after um, about maybe 25, 30 minutes of sitting there, my wife and I just looked at each other and we're like, I mean, there's bear scat everywhere, but we're just like, we're not, we, we're not going to sit here and wait till dark. This is just miserable. So we left and about two days later, because there was so much bear, bear sign in there, we came back and we were wearing these prototypes and over the course of a three hour period, uh, I took maybe one bite. Um, so that, you know, and I had taken so many that I could not, could not even stay there the prior time. 
Well, everybody knows spring bear is one of the worst times you know, for the bugs, for black flies, mosquitoes, and all that, especially up in Canada. It'll just drive you off the bait. I don't, you wonder how the bears and, and all that can do that. Well, that's that's awesome. Well, I'll tell you what. Um, I got the vest this year to use, <laughs> and I'm going to tell you what, dude, that is, that's bad to the bone. Uh, that vest is especially, I don't care if your guy just goes out and sits or, you know, if you're, you do reaping or, or if you're a running gunner, it covers to me, it's everything. It's light. It puts everything I can put in there. Um, it's comfortable. One thing that I've always had, and I've had a lot of the different vests is that they're, you know, when you're sitting, it's okay. But when you're moving, they drive you nuts. And, you know, then you're trying to fold up the big pad or trying to get it comfortable. You, you, this is a knockout right here. I mean, again, when I'm talking about what's the biggest improvement, I mean, that right there, being able to be comfortable and be able to run and gun. But do you have a vest there that you could talk about? Yeah, I've got one here. Uh, it just actually came out this year at Earth colorway. So it's you can get it in a solid if you're interested, or you can get it in subalpine or, or timber. Um, but, uh, yeah, with this vest, uh, yeah, it's 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 a – it's a very uh, well thought out design all the way from like the pot call is on your left side. So if you think about it, like pulling your left hand out, uh, you're typically going to go and access your pot calls. You're going to hold them with one hand and you're going to reach your right That's side with your striker yeah. uh, to be able to make your calls. So so kept setting those set out holds two pot calls in this molded pot call pocket. Uh, you can hold about four strikers uh, in, uh, you know, uh, Gore-Tex waterproof pockets. So, you know, if it's raining, that shed those away and keep those protected. Quick storage right here on the side for your strikers. Um, and then any diaphragms, uh, there's three slots sitting right in the, uh, in the pot call pocket. So everything's accessible from the front side that you're going to need for your day-to-day -day calls. You know, I keep my shot calls. You know, uh, you know, anything from a peacock or an owl or uh, conditioning tools, uh, I can keep in a, a small storage pocket. And then here on the chest, you know, your box calls, uh, you know, slide in. Okay. I always keep the paddle closest to my body. Wow. And so, I'll tell you what, also, I thought was very unique and cool is if you can show the seating system. You know, one of the things that's kind of tough with other ones are just not user friendly, but this is so cool of, uh, you know, releasing it and, and, and then just pulling the straps and getting the, the pulling your seat right back up. Yeah, it takes it takes a little bit once you figure it out uh, too. you know, it might be a little bit different because it's not a magnetic holder. But when you're taking a look at the seat, you can literally just reach back here with your thumbs and be able to push this to release it, to get to the seat into the sitting position. I've already got mine deployed and then you just pull it up. And then when you want to Simple. release it again, down again, you just reach back here with these thumb tabs, pull it down and it just rolls right back under yeah, you. I, you know, that was one of my favorite uh, things on there too, that I really loved that. Uh, yeah. And you, you, know, that, that you can easily adjust. Like I've got this one set a little bit too large for me. I'm, I'm about a size medium, but to adjust the, the shoulders, you know, all you can go all the way down from a small uh, all the way up to a double extra large, just by adjusting your sizing on the shoulder straps. Um, and that can all be done. Uh, you can run a water bladder in the back. So if you're getting mobile, you know, just have your, your water bladder, you can just reach over and take a quick drink. Uh, you don't have to have to go through uh, adjusting uh, any or having to pull out an extra water bottle, you can just uh, do it while on the move. Guys, what Chris has talked about was really neat is it's marked. It, it isn't, you could have medium, large, and extra large, and maybe 2X that you and can. So both, yeah, and small. So you're not, you know, kitty cattered or you're not off right there. He's showing. So you can just pull that right up into actually truly custom fitting yourself as you're, as you're putting that vest on. So there's just, yeah, so many just benefits. slide straight on down like this and then you just lock it into place uh, wherever you want. So if you're a larger medium, you can just set it where you need to. And then so uh, truly fits a multiple size of, of hunters. Is there a certain water bladder that you recommend that goes with that? maybe better than any of the others? I tend to just look for one that's not blue. 
Uh, so, you know, uh, I mean, it's only just a strip, but I, I tend, you know, there's, there's some, some different brands out there that you can look if you just, uh, Google that and then just look for some that, you know, that are, uh, that tend to be not blue. Uh, some of the military ones you can find too, or tend to be green as well. So I, I would just search for, you know, uh, water bladders and you'll, you'll be able to get exactly what you need. Definitely red or blue has got to be out. <laughs> Definitely I think not. a red color by the head is isn't going to work. Can you uh, can you show the viewers too? Um, you know, you kill your turkey, and and how would you put your turkey on, and what's the reason for the orange? Yeah, so this there's pretty- there's there's a couple of uh, too, right? yeah, there's there's two for you can run here. You can pull them off if you don't want them, uh, but these are essentially designed to go around. Uh, if you, it's, it's really a, what I would, I guess I'm not even sure of the right term, but, uh, the turkey's elbow, not the spur. So you want to go higher right. than the spur. You want to get into the feathered area above the foot. Uh, you'll lock those in at that point. Um, and then it takes a little bit of practice, but these are, these straps on the back here, uh, can go all the way across, uh, and, and you can lock your birds. So on the front by pulling these side straps, uh, that come all the way across and go over here. Uh, sorry, you may not be able to see that. It's kind of below the string, um, the screen, but I tend to pinch around their neck and like lock them in and cinch it down because they, they kind of go uphill. I even spin it around their head. Um, I'll carry a decoy on the back too. If you've got like a hen, uh, I'll carry her neck down the same way on the back of this, uh, of this vest as well. So if you spend a little bit of time playing with your unique setup, uh, you can, you will be able to fi- figure out how to be able to carry uh, both the decoy and uh, and then on your way out, if you need to carry a bird out, you can as well. Well, it kind of reminds me as a waterfowler, kind of like the gambrel system that we always put our birds and strap them over our shoulders. So you're, you're, you're using the weight of the bird to hang yeah. itself. But I do, like the, I do like the chest strap coming across. And like you said, with the lap of the neck, you're locking that in there and then you have your orange that you pull out to kind of just cross over the bird. Yeah. And you can just pull that out and hang it out. Just gives you a little bit extra, um, you know, uh, uh, you know, I think during Turkey season, for whatever reason, I feel like uh, there's also even on private land, uh, I've gotten to the point that I'll even do that. Cause I've, in, I've, I've, only caught maybe one poacher on my property for deer, but I've caught three turkey hunting. So oh, for whatever it brings it brings out the people in the woodworks. And, and the tough thing with that too, they're they're camouflage and they're sneaking up and they hear that calling. And you know, even if you do have a bird, I'm going to try um, Wade and Teresa. They have the Frankenstein. I think it's called the decoy. We were at the Iowa Deer Classic, and he had. I was. You know, I use Dave's. Dave's been a good friend, Smith of mine for years, and I use his all his decoys. But we're gonna. This guy has a system that's on a a, a track that now you can use a remote, which he did for the DNR, or you can use a string that pulls. But it has a tail system that connects, so you can turn the tail. You can close one side of the fan. You can drop it down, bring it up, and move it back and forth to give it movement. You know. And we're excited and we're going to film with that. But the same thing also, probably the whole thing is about being safe, you know, having being safe with it. Yeah, so. absolutely. Uh, I can remember one time my wife and I were, we're actually headed out on a turkey hunt and we got a little bit of a late start and we were driving and we had a spot where we could see down the power line on the hunting camp we were, we were on. And I looked back, I was like, oh, there's some birds in the, in the power lines. And then we stopped and I looked. I don't know. It felt like a minute, but it's probably only 30 seconds. I was like, those birds haven't moved. Those are decoys. And so we crawled out there and yeah, a couple of uh, high school kids had come onto our place and, uh, um, and they were like, Hey, our buddy uh, is up above us here. And he, he shot a Jake. Do you want us to calm down? I was like, sure. Yeah. Why don't you bring, why don't you bring him on down? Yeah. So they had, they had killed a couple of Jake's off the place and, uh, yeah, it's just uh, it's unfortunate that you find people the unfortunate things. Well, yeah. I got it. You know, I probably this is the first time this story's been told. A friend of mine, we were known as the two top, you know, Lynch and Sabota. They were the killers, waterfowl turkeys, and everything in our whole county, lower part of the state. And uh, we were hunting one morning. 
we had worked all night, so we were pretty tired. And we were out that morning, no sleep. We were hunting those gobblers, and we had some man that they were just on fire like you've never seen. We were just so excited, but they just weren't moving in. I said, "Dude, they're hanging up on us." Then we kind of we went, we tried moving different areas, and ended up we we moved across the swamp, and it seemed like they were getting louder. But I said, "I just think they found a holding spot." Yeah, they had a holding spot. We got to the top of the hill, and it was pen turkeys. <laughs> We, we looked at each other and said, this stays here. <laughs> what happened here? I'm glad I got here. that out of you. We all have one. Of some, of some story <laughs> like that. Well, man, that was, yeah, they were pinned turkeys. Well, Chris, I tell you what, I surely appreciate you spending your time. You're very busy. I know with the sick and everything you're going and all the products and stuff you're working on. Um, I, I appreciate you taking the time. And, and this is, like I said, very important to me. And folks, I'm going to tell you what, the, the stuff works. It's amazing. And you really, like he said, it, it's how do you put a price tag on trying to stay healthy and something that, and like I said, when I've had Lyme disease, when you're sick with it, you would probably pay anything to get healed from it. I'm, and I'm telling you that it's just, we had the doctor in Missouri. And I, do you remember his name, Diane? He's, he's the top uh, doctor in the, in the country with Lyme's disease. And he's a couple hours from us. And it's just, you know, I, I'm trying to remember the, the drug, the hydro. I'm trying to remember the drug he'd send us that you take every year when you think you get it, you know, or you've been bit, he would send a prescription and you take this to, to try to get any of it's, it's a very serious thing. It's a very real thing. I did hear about that. There's a new tick that was coming this year that guys are talking about. So this was a, to me, a very important podcast. It was great to meet you. And, um, I appreciate your time. Folks, you can go check all this out at, at Sick of Gear. Is it Sick of Gear.com or Sick of.com? Uh, sick of Gear.com. Sick of Gear.com. Go to the Turkey, the Equinox. You can read all about it, how it was made, um, all the clothing that they got there. You go check it out. Get you some ordered in before it's gone here for the turkey season. And um, again, like I said, Chris, I appreciate it. Folks, if you like this podcast, reach out. You can subscribe to us. You can go Legendary Gear USA. You can check out um, our podcast there, or you can go to Legendary Gear with George Lynch for our YouTube channel. Uh, check everything we got going there. And uh, always remember, hunt safe, hunt smart. Oh, I, my, my wife's already telling me I've, I cannot forget to talk about our Legendary Gear turkey line, um, our turkey calls. We have our pot calls that was designed by um, Jason Powell. Jason Powell is a two-time Purple Heart recipient. That is our pot calls. He's uh, every uh, last year at the NWTF. I think he took eighth in the world. But our uh, mouth calls are all designed by a friend of ours. Jason Pollock is a 12-state turkey caller. Check it out. Legendary Gear USA. You can check out our turkey line there. Did that cover everything? Oh, she's happy now. Happy wife, happy life. You know what they say. But <laughs> always remember, hunt safe, hunt smart. And may the good Lord be your guide. I'll be out there rain and shining All a part of the great design Bring it on, I can never get enough Because that's what legends are made of